Hey class, let's try another one here. How about uh, chapter 16, looks like number uh, 33. Got a couple questions on this one. And so as I look at this one, it a, starts off by saying a two-dimensional water wave. So they're, they're talking about something that looks more, you know, more like this, and it spreads out in two dimensions on the surface of the water, and so the energy spreads. And what's kind of important here in this one, because we didn't do any kind of two-dimensional spread, is to remember that in this chapter, we have this equation. Uh, this is the equation for the power transmitted down a straight line. And so if you just have a single line, it, it keeps transmitting down. And so this is a way of saying that the power transmitted down uh, depends on a number of factors. And when you think about each factor, it's, it's not so much of a surprise. Um, but it's this one here that we're going to focus our attention on here because it says that the wave spreads out in circular ripples show that the amplitude at a distance r from the initial disturbance is proportional to 1 over r squared. <clears throat> and so the, the, the way to kind of handle this is to say, now, we got to extend this kind of discussion um, to a full circle. So you might actually say that this equation, which is the power going down this, this rope, and I can't, didn't really set up my picture well, but if you kind of gave the wave a, a width to it, uh, you might be saying that, and so maybe this is the, the x-axis, and I'm trying to draw a width to it back into the, uh, oh, let's just call that the, going backwards, the negative z-axis, and so z-axis coming up here and y-axis going vertical. And so this is really kind of like the energy per unit length. And so if you had like a second one next to it, uh, that would be transmitting twice as much energy. So you would take that number and multiply it by two. Uh, maybe if you had a third one, then you'd multiply by three. And so however long you make it, say L, that would be the total power transmitting. So that's kind of a big step, is to kind of realize that if you made this more into a surface, and I'm just making it straight out, I would say length L, and so this is the power of, say, one string, and then, of course, multiplied by the number of strings. And if, say, you know, there was one string per every centimeter, you'd multiply by the number of centimeters. Okay, so we don't have our waves in a plane, but or they're in a plane, but they're going out in a circular pattern. So uh, let me draw the circular pattern. At, at some radius, say, r not for our reference. And then as the wave goes out a little further, so a little bit later, it now has some radius r. But here's the key to the understanding here is that if this wave moves out and now is spread out over a bigger length, meaning that number is bigger, then what ends up happening is something else has to get smaller and for the power to be the same. Or put this way, the, the power at this position, say R0, and the power at position R uh, would have to be the same. And so maybe I'd write this as one half uh, mu. Now, mu is probably a bad symbol here because this has to do with a string, and we're talking about water waves now. But fortunately, the only part I'm really caring about is the amplitude squared at position R0, and then the length of it would be the circumference. And so this is kind of that added feature, and that's what makes this the kind of the, kind of the hard problem is uh, you, 
you're kind of on your own to figure out how to go from kind of this one-dimensional and then multiply by length to make it kind of a two-dimensional uh, description. But I hope my beginning analogy kind of helped that you would, you know, you would have done this for one string and so you would have doubled it for two and tripled it for three and just multiply by the total length for however many strings you have. So if I just make this a circle, this L just becomes a two pi R and that's what I'm trying to do here. So, so here is the power of the string although now I'm going to say this is a water wave. And so this is really the power per cross-sectional length. And so here's the length, which would be the circumference. And then so later on, that same energy moves out. So this is a conservation of energy argument. And so I would say, what is the amplitude now at some bigger radius? And I claim that it probably goes down because now the perimeter or circumference, excuse me, I shouldn't call it a perimeter, uh, but circumference uh, would actually be bigger, and so this amplitude should go down. And so this question is really asking, how does the amplitude here compare to the amplitude back here? And you can kind of see there's so many things that are the same, and particularly the mu. So whether we're talking about string waves or water waves, the this part goes away. Um, the velocity goes away. The frequency squared goes away, the 2 pi goes away, and so here's the idea that the amplitude at some beginning spot, I'll call it the reference squared, times that radius must be the same as the amplitude later on, uh, some other r, and then at, at radius. And so if we go to, go to solve this for the amplitude at some other radius, uh, we would get something that would look like this. I'll put the, uh, well, maybe I'll put the a naught squared first, uh, then I'll put the r naught, and then the r. And then, of course, oh, this is squared. So then if I take the square root, you'll begin to see that I have this kind of reference spot like that. And then over here is the square root of the radius. And so what I would say then here is that the amplitude at some further radius is uh, some numbers. And so that number there, so I'll just say, um, I'll take away the equal sign and I'll just say it is then proportional to the one over the R. And uh, so it, it's equal to that, some, some, some reference value, and then whatever the new radius is. And so now we can figure out what the amplitude would be as the radius gets bigger and bigger. We just need to know what it is at some reference point and then see that it decays away as a 1 over r squared. And that's their suggestion. All right. Short and sweet. Bye now.